your man, Louis T. Welcome to this Louis T. Network exclusive, ranking the eight head coaching vacancies and the four GM openings. Now let's talk about these eight job openings. And here's what I assess. Here's what I look at, right? When I'm thinking about a job opening, um, if I'm a GM, I'm taking into consideration everything from the roster, the cap space, um, the draft capital, ownership, how stable is the franchise? These are all things that matter to me. As a head coach, cap space doesn't matter as much. Draft capital, eh, it depends on what the situation is. That, that may come into play. But really, do you have a quarterback? And what's the roster look like? And how do I fit into the equation, right? How stable is the ownership group? How stable is the owner? How stable is the, the franchise as, as a whole? Because I don't want to be Frank Wright taking a job, thinking it's a five-year deal, moving my family to that area only to be fired 11 games in. I don't want to do that, right? So clearly these are things that would matter to me as a head coach. So let's go through where each of these teams rank in my estimation, some of this is um, facts, like hard data, numbers, and then some of it is opinionated. It's my opinion, right? So some of it is subjective and some of it is factual. So uh, let's start with cap space. That's something that isn't subjective. This is factual. These are hard numbers, right? So um, cap space-wise, you want to be in a healthy spot if you're trying to att attract a GM. Um, it, 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 it can be a deterrent. It doesn't have to be, but it can be a deterrent when trying to lure a GM there. I want to be able to come in and have flexibility. I don't want to come in and have to dig myself out of a hole immediately. But again, if you're going to turn the roster over anyway, that's probably going to help you get yourself where you need to be from a, a cap situation. Um, it's not impossible. And again, if you're going to find someone that's willing to do it, but it still makes it a lot harder to attract the type of talent that you probably are looking for if you are going after a top tier um, GM candidate. That said, um, coming in at sixth on this list are the Atlanta Falcons, who have $37 million worth of free cap space at this current juncture, good for 16th in the league. So right smack dab in the middle are the Atlanta Falcons. Um, the Atlanta Falcons have seven total draft picks, uh, number eight overall, and they have four picks in the top 100. So that's a really good situation right now with the Falcons. Um, and we'll talk more about their situation and, and how that can benefit them in their quest to find the next head coach of the Atlanta Falcons. So now we get to what I think is the most important question. If you are a prospective GM or head coach. I think these are the, this is the category that if you're a co head coach, this is the one you're looking at the most. Because if you don't have this, then I better have resources to get this or I'm not going to be successful, right? And it's quarterback. Do you have a quarterback? Falcons don't have a quarterback. And then my last category that I took into consideration when making um, up my list of these openings and where they rank, organizational stability slash owner, right? So how stable is your organization and how is your owner perceived around league circles? Do you have good ownership, trustworthy ownership, um, patient ownership, et cetera, et cetera? Is the owner going to allow you to make the decisions the moves that you want to make without meddling. These are the types of things you have to ask yourself if you're a potential GM or even a head coach. Because if you have a very meddlesome head coach or, or owner, he's going to not only meddle in the affairs of the general manager, but it's going to trickle down to you and personnel decisions and what you can and can't do on the field, who's playing, who's not playing, those types of things. You never want to be in that situation. So that's something that I would take into consideration uh, when I'm assessing these openings. So I I rated these jobs in, in this particular category, um, owner or organizational stability slash owner on a scale of one to five, five being the highest stability 
you're as functional and stable as it gets in the NFL to one, which is as dysfunctional as it gets. And it, you would like to stay as far away from that job, if at all possible. Um, Falcons. I put this ownership and organizational stability at a five. Arthur Blank is one of the most patient owners in the NFL. The, the Falcons have been a model organization in terms of, of stability. Now, uh, winning and success has eluded them here of late, you know, since Matt Ryan's uh, career kind of wound down. But um, this is a group that you can trust. If he hires you, you're going to be given every resource you need to be successful. He's going to back off. Yeah, he'll be on the sidelines at the end of the fourth quarter, right? But he's not going to tell you how to do your job. He's not going to be a helicopter owner, you know, Just like every other owner in the league, he's going to want to know what's going on. It's his team. He spent the money for it, right? But he's not going to prohibit you from doing your job. You're going to have all of the free range you need to get the job done. And if you don't, he's going to give you extra leeway to try and get it done. And if you can't, then he's going to move on. But it's not going to be a knee-jerk reaction, okay? Uh, We go to number five. And it's the Atlanta Falcons. To me... It's an interesting job. They have $37 million worth of cap space right now, which is good for 16th in the league. Uh, Seven draft picks, eighth overall pick in the 2024 NFL draft, and they've got four picks in the top 100. So they're sitting pretty to really upgrade this roster that I think is already very, very talented on both sides of the football. I think this is a, a roster you can win games with, which is why I think Arthur Smith was so pissed off because had he just gotten competent quarterback play, not good, not great, competent quarterback play. They would have made the playoffs and won that N- NFC South division because this is a good roster. So um, I think that is what is going to be very enticing. The, the problem here is, as I mentioned with the Raiders, even though you're at eight, which is not a bad spot to be, if you don't love Michael Penix Jr. or Bo Nix or one of these quarterbacks, I don't know if J.J. McCarthy's coming out I don't necessarily think he's the answer anyway, but who knows? Um, I I don't know if you're going to be able to fill the most important position in this sport at eight. And that's what's holding you back currently. And if you can't fill it at eight, you're going to find yourself in the same predicament that you were in last year. You know, so do you go the veteran quarterback route to hold you over until you find that young guy, that's a tough decision. I think you should be in the market for Justin Fields because if the Bears decide to move on from him, he's the exact type of quarterback that would fit your offense with the weapons that you currently have. If the Bears decide to move on from Fields, you should be first in line. Okay? You should be first in line. If they don't move on from Fields, you're screwed. Pretty much, unless they're unless they're willing to do business with you. They were willing to go back to nine last year. Would they be willing to go back to eight this year? I don't think they're willing to move that far back because they want Marvin Harrison Jr. if they're going to move back at all. They want Marvin Harrison Jr. if he comes out and declares. Hasn't done that yet. And his, his fellow receiver, uh, receiver at Ohio State uh, went back to school today. So I don't know. They could have all gotten together and said, hey, man, let's, let's run this back and try to win a Big Ten championship. We haven't done that. So maybe he's going back to school. I told you these boys are already making money. These NIL deals are real. He's already making millions of dollars at school. He doesn't have to rush to the NFL, which is what I've been saying. That could change the the way the Bears think about where they're willing to go in the draft. Who knows? We'll see. But right now, the Falcons, excuse me, are fifth on this list. Um, Now I'm going to take the liberty to take it a step further And I'm going to give you who I think. This is not who I think is going to end up there. I'm telling you who I think is the best fit for these jobs. Okay. Again, keep in mind, understand what I'm saying. I'm not telling you this is who I think the franchise is going to hire. This is who I think is the best hire for the job. Okay. For the Falcons. I think their two best options are either Ben Johnson, if you're going offensive minded, or it's Mike McDonald, if you're going defense. So Ben Johnson, and I've heard Bill Belichick's name 
referenced in terms of the Falcons, I don't think that's a great fit. And I know he's not coming to Washington. And, and those were the two names that were mentioned when he first was cut loose. And um, I don't think it's a good fit for him in Atlanta because of what? They don't have a quarterback. And what did we just see him struggle with in New England at the end of his tenure? Not having a quarterback. I, you can't put Bill Belichick in a position where he doesn't have a quarterback. He's proven already that's not what he's good at. He, he, he can take that defense in Atlanta and whip it into shape and all that good stuff, but he needs to be somewhere where it's already established and all he's got to do is come in there and, and, and make shit happen, okay? Um, to me, Ben Johnson is the perfect antidote for what the, what the ailment is in Atlanta offensively. Like, I, I didn't think Arthur Smith's offense was terrible, but obviously the quarterback position was a problem. But when you look at their, the offensive weapons that they have, they got an elite or borderline elite player, young elite player at every level offensively, except for the most important position, which is why they're on this list to begin with. Uh, but you got Bijan Robinson. You got Kyle Pitts, who was pretty much a non-factor offensively coming off the injury this year and then just wasn't a factor in the offense for whatever reason. Uh, and then you've got Drake London. You got some stuff, man. And I just think about what Ben Johnson was able to do with a dynamic back in Jameer Gibbs in Detroit, a dynamic tight end in, in Sam Laporta, and a, and a really good receiver in Amara St. Brown. And I'm thinking about if he can do that with Amara St. Brown, what can he do with Drake London? If he can do that with Sam Laporta, what can he do with Kyle Pitts? If he can do that with Jameer Gibbs, what can he do with B. John Robinson? Are you kidding me? Just got to get this man a quarterback. You're at eight. If an opportunity presents itself, you go and get one of these dudes. Worst case scenario, you don't got to love him. Take Michael Penix Jr. You could do a hell of a lot worse, right? I'm not saying, I'm just saying. Hell, if you like Bo Nix, go that direction. I wouldn't. But all I'm saying is, with that kind of talent, we've seen him do magnificent things with that type of talent already. He can do it again. He can replicate it. And if you're Mike McDonald, um, young, defensive-minded, tough, I think those things were traits that the Falcons already exhibited defensively this year. It just for whatever reason, you know, they didn't get it done a lot of times because their offense was turning the ball over, doing stupid stuff. But you bring in a guy like Mike McDonald, and I think there's some work that needs to be done on that front, right? But you still got – remember, Grady Jarrett missed most of the season with an injury. You bring you – know, you got Grady Jarrett coming back. You, you need a legitimate defensive end. So you still be, be, feel like you've been looking for one of those since the days of John Abraham. It feels like you've been looking for one of those, you know. But if you can get one of those, your linebacker position always seems to be playing really well. Um, the corners, I think, are really solid, right? And I think you got something – you know, well, Jesse Bates, the third is a, is a monster at safety. Um, I just, I like the stuff and I, I know that I might be in the minority, but I like Clark Phillips, the third, I thought he played well, he's just undersized. And if he could find the football a little bit more consistently, he was in great position a lot of the year. Just again, he's an undersized guy, but I like him a lot. I think you, there's some stuff there that you can maneuver defensively. And I've already told you the talent is there on offense. They spent, Tons of draft capital on the offense. The offensive line is set, ready to go. Just drop the damn quarterback in there. That's what they need. So I, I see those two guys being, you know, solid fits there. Mm -hmm.